Michael Graham. Now, 96.9. Boston. It's the number one topic in of conversation in Boston. People saw the Occupy Wall Street mar- uh, activity. They saw the arrests, the marches. Then they heard about arrests here in Boston, outside Bank of America. They've seen the tent city. What's really going on? Let's get someone to help us who knows what's up. Garrett John Laporto is one of the people who helped organize Occupy uh, Boston. Uh, I appreciate your time, sir. Thanks so much. Hello, Michael. Do your friends call you Garrett John? Uh, Garrett, fine. Excellent, Garrett. Hey, uh, so how much when, when people when you see people comparing you guys to the Tea Party in the sense that there's not really a leader, it's just you know, people are energized by ideas. Is that an accurate description of the way this thing is being organized, just kind of grassroots? That's accurate in the sense that, you know, originally the Tea Party was very idealistic. It was leaderless. It hadn't been influenced by big money. And uh, and it had the potential to really do some great change for us. for the whole country and this again is another attempt at that and one of the ways we're trying to ensure that we don't become hijacked by some special interest group or one particular political party is we're having democratic meetings every single day at every single of these occupations to try to allow everybody to have a voice in what's happening here. Yeah, and I've been watching, uh, like, the General Assembly, I think they call it down in New York. Do you have yep. a General Assembly here, too? Exactly. And you post stuff on the web. It's very transparent. Yep. And yet, despite the transparency, let me give you an example. Tea Party, TEA, tax enough already. Agree or disagree with their message? Pretty clear, you know, no taxes, smaller government, no, not debt. I don't know that I, that the average person listening right now here on 96.9, Garrett, could give you a simple, direct explication of the motive of the Occupy Boston, Occupy uh, Wall Street movement. Right. And that's, so can you that's help intentional. Us? Yes. It, it could be summed up right now as what it is right now is the process. It's a process of reclaiming democracy. Mm-hmm. And what we're doing is having a grassroots democracy in person. People are coming together, camping out, and dialoguing and saying, all right, we all know there's something wrong with the system here. How are we going to fix it? How can we make this better? And we have, you know, Republicans, Democrats, independents, anarchists, Everybody's coming together, and we're trying to basically resurrect that democracy that the founding fathers had intended before there was all this corporate influence. This is we're talking to uh, Garrett John Laporta, one of the organizers of uh, Occupy Boston. Then why aren't you occupying Beacon Hill? I mean, isn't that where democracy happens if you're trying to reorder? Democracy? Well, what we recognize is that there's kind of two democracies happening right now. There's the corporate influence democracy. There's the mo- democracy that runs the government, and we call it democracy, but unfortunately, if you have a lot of money, you have a lot more say than many, many, many people. So that's not, we feel like that's been corrupted a bit. What we're doing is having a in-person meeting, a forum, these, these general assemblies where anybody can come and, and we want everyone to come. And that means like all of your listeners who think there's a bunch of Fruit Loops here, you know, waving signs about things that they don't agree with, will come on in and wave your own signs and come in and engage in the dialogue. We sure. need you. We want you. We want balance in this movement. Um, how many times does, uh, just to pick somebody, uh, Bill Gates get to vote? Uh, well, he, he gets to vote once. And how many times does Garrett John Laporto get to vote? I get to vote once. So how However, is it that Bill the one percent Bill Gates could is controlling put money, the control in the Bill Gates could put money in a five hundred one c four, throw it through a super PAC, and basically buy you know a billion dollars worth of uh, commercial advertising mm-hmm. to influence. A million voters to vote in, towards his objectives. He could do that. Uh, and, and if Bill Gates did do that, his objectives would be uh, the objectives shared by most of the American left and center left. The same with uh, George Soros, the same with Hollywood millionaires, the same with Silicon Valley millionaires. Right. You know, there's, there's not a big shortage of millionaires on the left. So I'm trying to figure this out. Somehow, the minority of, of millionaires are, in fact, secretly more powerful than the majority of millionaires, and they're somehow tricking people into voting for stuff they don't believe in? Is Let, that right? let's, let's be clear here. If, mm-hmm. if you're a billionaire, mm-hmm. you've got interests inherently, your own financial interests mm-hmm. are very different than the financial interests of 99% right. of the population. Mm-hmm. Right. And if, if I was a billionaire and I was being selfish, I would 
influence the government to make my tax burden lighter and mm-hmm. allow the, the masses mm-hmm. to pay for whatever needed to right. be done. And yet, in election after election after election, people running on platforms of reducing taxes win, and people running on platforms of raising taxes lose to a majority of that 99% who cast the ballots. Now, Garrett John Laporto, you can't say that the millionaires' ads are outweighing the drumbeat from CBS, ABC, NBC, Washington Post, Boston Globe, San Francisco Chronicle, going, the rich suck, the rich suck, eat the rich, get the rich. I mean, no one is vilified, other than fat people, no one is vilified more in the media conversation than rich people. So how are they doing this amazing magic? I think what you're you're missing is the corporate, you know, corporate lobbying Mm -hmm. is where the laws are made. So you get, it doesn't matter who gets the Elected, it matters how much you can influence that person who was elected to to introduce a bill and vote on a bill that favors your ulterior motives. But then they have to go home and they have to get voted on, and people, so the people who voted for Obamacare, people, for example, got snowed, crushed. Then people can be snowed by that same kind of advertising where you just tell people lies again and again and again until they believe it. But Garrett John Laporto, the, in 2008, yep. the American people voted for a you know guy with one clear left image. Yep. And in 2010, they voted for a bunch of people with a very clear right vision, you know, yep. ideology. Yep. And so, where, so did the millionaires switch sides or something? Or did let, we not let, just have let, two competitive elections let, where Michael, ideas Michael, mattered? Let's, let's take a step back. If you are really intending to claim power what do you do you divide and conquer you take two sides of the same coin and you pit them against each other and you get them fighting so hard that they forget what the real issues are and that's where you consolidate your power so if you're very very wealthy if you're if you are a wealthy corporate interest what you do is you inject the media with all sorts of sensational hot button trigger issues so that people will argue about that stuff and get so inflamed and embittered with each other and against each other about that stuff that you can kind of waltz in there and just take the democracy out from under everyone. And that's what's been happening. Garrett, one of the most common issues, uh, if you read the media coverage and listen to the media coverage live, that comes up from the young people out there with you is debt forgiveness, and particularly college loan forgiveness. In other words, I spent six years smoking pot and partying and have a crap be useless degree in communications, right. and I can't get a job, so I'm going to go protest people who hire people. Is there that, you go. I mean, is that that's smart? Pretty, yeah, it's, you know, that could be pretty laughable. Uh, it is and, laughable, and, isn't and, it? And, and the thing that we need to tell your listeners is your listeners are maybe more sensible than that. So please get down to Dewey Square and start adding some sensible demands because this is your movement too. This is not anybody's movement but mm-hmm. who shows up. And right now, yeah, the, the college kids who don't have, who have a little extra time on their hands or whatever, the ones who've graduated college don't have a job, sure, they have more time on their hands. They get down there first. But don't let that be the whole movement. Come down yourself. There's something happening, and it's democracy in action, and we need you to come in and bring your own opinions and your own insights and your own wherewithal about what needs to be done to make our country better. And Garrett, I was there with about 2,000 of my listeners for the first Boston Tea Party in 2009, and we have been making difference. I want to run past some of these demands because you keep deferring, deflecting to what the others believe. I'm just curious which of these demands in Inspired you, for example, the demand for a guaranteed living wage, regardless of employment, demand for a trillion dollars in new ecological spending, demands for open borders migration, demands for immediate across-the-board debt forgiveness of all debt, including credit cards. Are any of these motivating you? Are these things? No, I mean I do believe that you know the United States was built on immigrants, so I think we should be kind towards immigrants. But besides that I don't agree with any of those demands but what I do agree is with the democratic process that's Mm -hmm. happening with the community that's building around that and with the importance of that Mm -hmm. and I think that all of your listeners can relate that yeah you know the Tea Party is great too but the Tea Party has kind of been subverted by the uh, Republican Party to be its own thing and then therefore the dialogue that could be going across both sides of the aisle isn't happening anymore (laughs) tell Mitt Mitt Romney and Mitch tell Mitt Romney and Mitch McConnell Mitch McConnell yep. and the uh, Senator Hatch that the Tea Party has been <laughs> subsumed to the Republican Party because well, they sure. spend the time running in front. But here's my point. When I have a Tea Party representative on the show, yeah. they don't say it's just about the process. They say, here 
here are my principles I believe in. What are the principles of Occupy Boston and Occupy Wall Street? Can you give me one? Democratic process without oh, corporate influence. Bogus, bogus, That's bogus. Not bogus. That's what you say when you don't want to stand up for something. On. We have, dem- we have, to- we are, we have cl- lots and lots if of democracy. Think, if, you that, if you think that democratic process is bogus, then you're not a true American. No, I think that your complaints about the democratic process are bogus. When you have choices like Scott Brown, normal person, versus Elizabeth Warren, freak socialist, that's a, those are real choices. When you have when you have McCain, Obama, those are real choices. When you have Obama, uh, whoever it ends up being, it's good, probably going to be a pretty darn clear choice. Uh, I'm sorry, democracy is working. People are being given choices. People are being given choices on a very rudimentary level. But the choices that happen in the halls of Congress mm-hmm. are not reflecting the the intentions of the American people, whether you're a Republican or Democrat or Independent, doesn't matter. What's happening in the halls of Congress is that the ones with the money are getting their way, and we need to stop um, that. Well, the good news is a bunch of people got their way out of office in 2010 when they were voted out by a dynamic electorate. Garrett John Laporto, good luck down there on the... Uh Thank you. And please, all of your listeners, come see what's happening. Mm-hmm. It's about you. It really is. And this could be a great thing for everyone if, if we can have a balanced dialogue.